Hello students, welcome to year 3 science lesson 7. This uh, lesson is on cellular respiration, the amazing process of turning food into energy. I'm really, really excited about the teaching this lesson, really, and for you to learn these concepts. Before we begin, however, we need to uh, review a little uh, principle, well, a little, a very important principle of physics. It's called the law of conservation of energy. And simply stated, this law says that the total energy of an isolated system remains constant. That's kind of the technical way of describing it. Another way of saying that could be by saying that energy can neither be created nor destroyed, but it is transformed from one form to another. For example, chemical energy can be transformed into kinetic energy and vice versa. Kinetic energy can be transformed into chemical energy or into electrical energy and so on. So different forms of energy are transformed, but they are not really created or destroyed. Um, in, the, in the scriptures, we have kind of a, a, this principle expressed uh, when, the script, when the Lord says, this is the light of Christ, which light proceedeth forth from the presence of God to fill the immensity of space. And these verses in section 88 uh, teach that really this energy, the light of Christ, is the, the light of the sun, is the light of the moon, is what makes everything, every living thing, uh, work. Okay, so we can see here the principle of how energy in the universe is, is everywhere. And so we are going to see today how this law applies to a cellular biology. Okay, so keep that in mind. Energy can neither be created nor destroyed, but it is transformed from one form to another. Okay, so another, another preliminary here before we get into the topic. What do these four pictures have in common? Okay, think about it. Well, these four pictures are examples of how this law applies and how energy is transformed. Really, when you have a campfire, what is it that we are doing? Basically, we are putting the, the wood into the fire and the, there has to be some uh, starting source of energy that starts breaking down the carbon bonds of the molecules of the wood, okay? And that breaking down of those bonds, that is a chemical energy, transforms, releases that energy into heat, okay, and light. And so the, the, the fire is basically the transformation of the chemical energy of the cellulose molecules in the wood into light and heat, okay? So the, the carbon is being released uh, by this process. After the... the um, the campfire basically gathers sufficient energy. It uh, achieves some type of critical mass of energy where it, it, it creates its own chain reaction. And the fire will keep going, will basically keep breaking down these carbon bonds until it runs out. All right. So what do we have here? We have a car. The cars have what is called an internal combustion engine what do the car have what does the car have in common with the campfire well the internal combustion engine also uses hydrocarbons like gasoline 
and then the spark that the battery provides ignites these hydrocarbons and it causes really a small explosion inside the piston of the engine and it breaks down the bonds between this uh, hydrocarbon molecule, the gasoline molecule. The, when, when the bonds are broken, with that energy being ignited into the hydrocarbon, it releases energy. The energy expands, the gases inside the piston, the piston moves, and that is how the engine moves and makes the car move around. All right, so there we see how, you know, basically a, a, a car has an, a, a little campfires inside it, okay? Very, very similar. In here, we are breaking carbon bonds of cellulose. Here, we are breaking carbon bonds of hydrocarbons. What do we have here now? Here we have a, an electric plant, all right? This is probably a, um, a plant, a, a gas or a carbon a coal plant that produces energy, produces electricity, and it's basically the same principle. Here in the, in the um, uh, generator of the, the, the electric plant, we burn gas, natural gas, or coal, and that breaks also the bonds between these molecules. It generates heat. The heat is used to uh, heat up water and, and basically transform water from liquid to gas, to steam, and the steam turns the turbines that start generating electricity. So here we have, again, another example of uh, transforming the chemical en uh, energy storing the gas or the coal into heat and then into electricity, all right? So we have a carbohy a carbohydrate, okay, being transformed into light and heat. Uh, the gasoline in the car being transformed into kinetic energy. And here we have the uh, energy of the, the, the gas and the coal being transformed into electricity. What has the runner have to do now with all these three? Well, that this runner is the topic of what we are going to talk about. How does the body change the transforms the energy of the food that we eat into energy that the body can use to do movement or any type of work and even heat ourselves up okay so that is that is the same type of idea so here we see how energy is being transformed all right so now we are going to concentrate on you and I, on this runner, and how do we do this? And the process for this is called cellular respiration. So in a simplified manner, basically, we have to uh, understand that the food that we eat contains, uh, among many other things, contains carbohydrates, okay? So here we have, for example, a molecule of glucose. S means that it's solid, all right? So this is the representation, the ball representation of a molecule of glucose. And we eat that when we eat a piece of candy or when we eat a banana, whenever we eat a pasta, anything that can be transformed, okay, into glucose, it goes from the stomach is being broken down and digested and then it enters into the cells of the bloodstream and from there it goes inside the cells all right the next thing that we need similar to the fire here that it needs uh, uh, wood it needs air oxygen and it needs then the the flame to start the spark the car needs the same thing it needs gasoline it needs air and then it needs the spark from the battery. The, the, the power plant also needs all three, the cold or natural gas, 
air and then some fire to start the reaction. The same way we need the glucose that is our um, com combustion, you know, combustible material. We breathe in through our lungs oxygen and the oxygen is driven into the cells and then we produce, okay, as the result of cellular respiration, we produce carbon dioxide that is represented here and water, okay, so those are the results of the cellular respiration process, the simplified result. As you can see, the bonds between the molecule here of glucose, between the carbon molecules of glucose, is being divided, is broken. That releases energy. And that release of energy is captured in an amazing, amazing process by another molecule called ATP, adenosine triphosphate. Okay, we are going to talk more about that later. But basically, the breaking down of the glucose molecule in the process of cellular respiration releases energy, and this chemical energy is captured by another molecule called the ATP molecule, and also is stored as chemical energy, but this energy now in the ATP molecule is readily available to be used by every other cell process, okay? So that is the objective of cellular respiration. We eat, we breathe in, we breathe out, and we expel also water through sweat or uh, urination. Okay, or we use the water in other processes, as we shall see. Okay, but that is the process of cellular respiration. All cells, all cells, plant cells, animal cells, bacteria, you know, you name it, all cells in the presence of oxygen may do this process of cellular respiration. So we talked before about the mitochondrion, okay, and we talked that this is kind of the powerhouse of the cell. And the mitochondrion is the place where this ATP molecule is um, kind of synthesized, and the energy of the breaking down of the carbons is mainly uh, produced, okay? So we are going to see how that happens. And the, it is very interesting to see what happens here in the intermembrane space, okay? The inner membrane of the mitochondrion and the matrix. So the action really is between these spaces, the intermembrane space, the inner membrane, and the matrix of the mitochondrion, okay? So at this time, I would like you to pause this and watch the video on cellular respiration. This